Hello gamers, my name is Duma and welcome to the game room. If you aren't part of the game room Discord and Twitch and haven't seen the conversations about it, yes, you read that thumbnail right. This one bar build hit arc eight on PCNA. The craziest part is the visions I got on that run were seriously awful, not allowing me to fully play into the strength of the build. And I'm totally confident that this will hit arc nine with my ultimate goal of hitting arc 10, of which I'll be sharing those attempts over at the game room on Twitch if you wanna see that live. Also, the updated written guide is up for you as well over at thegameroom.tv with tons of other ESO builds and guides if you're interested. But wait, there's more. This exact one bar build also hit arc eight on the Dragon Knight as well. I ran the previous version of the build, which is this video here, through the archive with all of the classes in the game, hitting around the arc six area with all of them. Since creating this new version, I've only ran it with the Warden and DK so far, both of which have hit arc eight. I can't give you more of a testament to this build strength than that. It is a seriously strong build for the Endless Archive. I don't want to try and sell you on it. I'll let you be the judge. Already the previous, a bit weaker version of the build has gotten lots of people their Ink Slayer titles and spots on the leaderboards that people have shared in Discord on Twitch. Awesome work, by the way, to all those gamers and a big congrats to you. I'm going to go over this one quickly and if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, let's take a look. For this build, your best racial options are going to be High Elf and Nord, followed closely by a Breton. Then everything else somewhere a bit below that. Although most races are going to work just fine. We also have all 64 points into health and the first of many health stacking elements and are using the lover mundus for extra penetration for our consumables in early arcs you can use our tam pickled fishbowl to get through a little bit quicker and then in the upper arcs you want to swap this out for bear haunch of which the triple sustain element of it will really become valuable okay for the gear this is where things start to get a little bit different first we have the ice furnace set again this is an absurdly strong set for the endless archive allowing us to capitalize off of flame damage and burning status effects how it works is when you use frost damage, it also procs flame damage in the area, up to once per second, which is one of the main ways we're going to spread our burning status effects to all the enemies as you're kiting them. More on that in a bit. Next, we have a one-piece light monster set of your choice with a line of penetration. I'm using Krogs here. And then Oaken Soul, of course, giving us all the buffs necessary to make this possible with one bar. Now, this is where we zag when everyone else is zigging, with something unique and different. A large amount of people are taking advantage of the Heartland Conqueror set and the charge trait with the goal of procking status effects as as much as possible. A very solid option. This is different. Rather than proc effects a lot, we're going to let them proc naturally and then just extend out their duration many times indefinitely. We will end up with tons of fights with 100% uptime of your dot status effects. You can end up with some insane outputs with a little bit of vision RNG from bosses. Okay, so how are we doing this? We're doing this with the Serpent's Disdain set, which gives us a little bit of all of our resources and then a five set that extends the status effect duration by 16 seconds each which is huge. How we set up the gear is a little bit more technical than normal, but I'll try to break it down very easily for you. Here's the main goal. We need to hit the spell and physical resistance cap of 33,000 which is located on your character sheet here. It's not something that has any wiggle room. You have to do it if you want to hit that nosebleed area of the arcs, specifically with this build. You also need to have green vigor minor resolve rolling when you check. This won't be reflected unless you use the ability and then it's active for you for 20 seconds. Now you can see we are right at the 33K mark with both resistances. This is how we achieve that. We're going to use six heavy pieces reinforced on the chest, pants, shoulders, and then one minor piece of your choice. The rest of your traits will be in divines. Next, both jewelry pieces are in the protective trait, giving us our final bit of resistances. If you're a Nord, you should instead make both jewelry pieces arcane or infused, and also drop the reinforced on the minor piece, and possibly even the shoulder piece as well, and make them divines. You also want to try and chant all of your gear. I know this is costly, but this is a high arc build. If you're fine hitting around arc four, five, or six for the week, you can get away with a mix of health and magic enchants. But if you really want to push, you want to try and chant everything. Think of it like this. No, you don't have to, but you're hurting yourself a bit if you don't. We also have all jewelry pieces with the spell damage glyph and using a precise frost staff with the poison enchant, of which this enchant ends up being a really solid portion of your damage in higher arcs. Because we are extending out our dots with the serpent set, we can drop the infused trait and pick up the precise trait, which will now give us a bit of offensive strength with extra crit rating for our dots and also defensive strength giving us more crit healing which will really start to come into play in the higher arc area 
When you're treading water at 15% health for a full minute performing Cirque du Soleil acrobatics just to stay alive, you aren't going to care much about getting more chill procs and will be thankful for the higher healing volumes keeping you alive. That and you can be confident while running around that your other status effects are doing big work for you without needing to be constantly maintained and refreshed. For our CP, we're taking advantage of percent based damage reduction benefits. The idea is the more damage you take as you get into higher and higher arcs, the more your CP will mitigate it with higher values coming off the percentages. This is what I mean. Ironclad reduces all direct damage you take by 6%. Enduring Resolve reduces all damage over time you take by 6%. Unassailable reduces all AoE damage you take by 6%. And then Duelist Rebuff reduces single target damage you take by 6%, which can stack with Ironclad's direct damage and Enduring Resolve's damage over time mitigation. You definitely don't want more damage from the blue tree anymore with this setup. Visions, Verses, and the rest of this build will take care of that. This mitigation will play a big part in helping you stay alive in higher arcs. In the red tree, we have the same allotment as the previous version of the build, using Boundless Vitality for more health, Fortified for more armor, Bastion for bigger health shields, and Juggernaut, which reduces the damage you take while CC immune by 5%. This stacks with the 6% from our heavy armor passives. The idea here is, you get CC'd constantly and are CC immune constantly within the archive. Every time you break that CC and are potentially panicking in that moment, as soon as soon as you break the CC, you are now super tanky to help you recover. For our abilities, I've taken every single skill tree in the game, torn it apart with every morph, and this is what I feel is your best in slot setup for this specific build. As discussed before, you want green vigor. This is way overkill in early arcs, and you can replace it with whatever you like there. Just use another damage source, it really won't matter. You'll be immortal and are just trying to get through the early arcs a bit quicker. You can use a spammable like Crushing Shock or another Dot if you like. If you need time to get used to the build, then just use vigor right from the start. Everyone going to be different, but whenever the point is that you decide to put this on your bars, you want to use it at least once every 20 seconds to keep up minor resolve, keeping you at the resist cap. As for the heal, this is used as one of your emergency heals, not something that you use in stride with just normal clearing. I'll show you a trick with it that I use to mitigate some of the hardest mechanics completely, such as the phase 4 dragon tough mechanics of the Thoat fight, all the way up to arc 7, and how I was able to flat-footed out-tank many marauders, even in higher arcs. First, you need to be aware of the Destruction Staff passive Trifocus, which is going to give you about a 15k HP shield after every heavy attack with the Frost Staff. So, after all your dots are rolling and you're kiting or dealing with the hard mech, you can literally just chain heavy attacks and green vigor together. Yes, you'll eat into a bit of vigor's healing uptime, but any extra movement you have to do, CC, panic moment, anything putting a gap in the spacing of your heavy attack spam can leave you in a window of the heal falling off. I found in those extremely tough moments, it's better just to overlap it and keep it safe. There's no reason to rush and push it normally. Here it is in action with the dragon mechanic. If you struggled here, look how easy this is. Other than keeping dots out, this is one button and heavy attacks, and I'm fully mitigating the most pressing mechanic of this entire fight. This is a very strong defensive combo. Our next ability is Arctic Blast. This serves a few functions for us. This is our main burst heal, additional frost damage around us when enemies are close, an AoE stun that is very useful for slow slowing down the pace of tough waves, and it's part of how we can reach the resist cap so easily on the Warden as it gives us more resistances from the Winter's Embrace passive Frozen Armor. Next is one of my favorite parts of the kit, which is Entropy from the Mage's Guild. This places a dot on an enemy and heals you for its duration, which is very long at 24 seconds. This can be placed on more than one enemy. How you use this is, as the archive grows and you are facing more and more mobs, you can apply this to more and more enemies, giving you more healing output the further you go. Helping you keep up with the increased damage you're taking. This is going to surpass something like Leeching Vine's healing output quite extensively, as well as providing another damage source to targets. You do, however, lose out on the Accelerated Growth Major Mending passive when below 40%, but I've tried them both and Entropy just massively outperforms everything in this tree by quite a large margin to try to get access to it, especially in higher arcs. Although, were I to pick a second option if you didn't have the Mage's Guild unlocked or leveled, it probably would be Leeching Vine's. Just please understand it's definitely a step down in value if that's what you choose to do, especially in higher arcs when running around kiting and getting flooded with tons of sizable entropy heals for very long periods of time. Next is our main damage ability we use to assist in kiting and proccing burning from our Ice Furnace set, which is Winter's Revenge. This places an AoE on the ground that slows enemies and deals frost damage. You're going to use and reposition this constantly. Think of it as the centerpiece of the damage kit. Next is Deep Fissure. This isn't here so much for the damage as getting access 
access to both major and minor breach, making up for the lack of penetration in the build. You just want to keep this pumping through ways of enemies to keep your debuffs out. On several other classes, I've been using Razor Caltrips. It actually ends up being crazy strong and one of my top damage sources whenever I use it. It also gives us major breach, but it also gives us access to decent physical damage. Normally that wouldn't be so hot in this context, but in the archive, think of how many times you had a vision choice and all three of them were terrible. I've found many times in that situation, there's usually something there about boosting physical damage that I typically disregard, but now have been picking them up with my runs with caltrips. So now rather than just picking whatever vision that provides little to no value, we start juicing this thing up instead. And almost every time it ends up hitting like a truck in higher arcs. It also functions as an additional kiting tool when things get crazy as it slows everything down inside of it. Not to mention the implications of other buffs inside the archive, such as additional damage over time and area damage. I'm just giving you this info ahead of time. In my own archive runs I'm going to be doing to try and score push with this build, I'm going to be experimenting with caltrips here and place a fissure in higher arcs if visions line up for it along the way. I just wanted you to have the info now in case it works out. I'll let you know. And last is our ultimate northern storm. Nothing comes close to this. Huge AoE frost damage and slows all around you, gives you 300 spell damage for 30 seconds, and gives you major protection, reducing the damage you take by 10% for 8 seconds, helping you live through very difficult moments. It also gives us additional resistances from the Winter's Embrace Frozen Armor Passive to help reach the resist cap. Boom! And that's it, gamers. It's that easy. This will be the final version of this build I make a video for. Any other small changes to the build in the future, I will update the website's written guide over at thegameroom.tv with it, and let you know in discord if you try the build i hope you enjoy it i appreciate you so much for watching please let me know if you have any questions and i hope you have a wonderful day